Hello everybody, Nigel with you, Nigel's Model Bench. Welcome back. Part 12 now of the build of this um, Scammell Commander tank transporter and as you can see we've got the trailer here still in the primer. I left you over a month ago and we were waiting for the Edward set to turn up and indeed it has turned up and I've been busy working on this stuff like the Chief Learn and the Airfix Sea King and everything so I thought today I'd get this out and do a bit more on it and get some work done on the interior so at least we can sort of I'll try and make an hour-long video up and, um, and go from there. Just a quick recap, if you haven't seen the other parts, um, this, <laughs> this got a lot of admiration from people. Painted the seats up, as you can see. More of that in a minute. You can see there's the driver's seat in the, in the pattern. Um, we've got the bits and pieces here. We've got some fire extinguishers there going on the outside. We've got our um, containers there. I think they're water containers, aren't they? Um, they're going to go on the trailer. I haven't fitted them because they're part of the Edward set, got the seat bases and everything in there and as you can see I, as I, I like to prime everything in black so there we go. Um, so the Edward set has turned up and as you can see a major part of the Edward set is the instrument panel so what we've got to do first of all, it tells us some instructions with Edward, is actually remove all the detail on the instrument panel so I'm going to come in with a pair of cutters first of all and just remove the larger of the raised bits like so just like that and it's just it's easier just to do this than to the other thing you can do is get a curved blade and just chop away rather than try and sand it all just chop away and there we go I can do the new curved blade in there actually but, uh, there we go we're going to completely cover this up With the uh, with the photo etch panel, so it's going to have to have a bit of a curve in it as well because it's not going to want to lay. It's going to it's going to want to lay flat. So make sure because the way bimetallic strips work and everything, make sure you glue one panel on first and then glue the other panel on top of it. Don't glue the panels here together because then what you find is you won't be able to bow them. They won't want to go because they've got the uh, one won't want to compress and won't want one won't want to extend. What you'll find then is if you glue them on, as you can see, we can easily scrape all that detail off of there. And what you'll find then is you can glue them on, and then if you did actually take them off, you will find that you won't be able to actually straighten them. That's how it all works. Right, and then we can get a little skinny sander here and just sand away. some more scraping up there. I'm leaving the camera on this guys because there's a lot of people watching this we're fairly new and some will not have seen anything like this before. So this model has attracted a lot of people who weren't, nece weren't necessarily keen modelers. It, it seems to have attracted a lot of people who just have a very strong interest in British militaria. There we go. So that's that done. So that's all cleaned up and it's got a nice sort of roughish finish on it. And what we'll do with the photo etch, we will come along and we will get the panel that's going onto the plastic, which is this one here. I will put that on there and I will get my standing stick and actually sand the back of it to roughen it up. And that will give the glue something to work with. If you put the glue straight on a nice shiny surface, it probably won't work. So there we are. So that's got that on there now. It's actually already got a bit of a curve in it, which is lucky. Photo Edge often gets a curve in it when they remove all the material from one side and it sort of comes in on itself. I can't remember if I did a, re a review of this set or not, but basically all we've got is an instrument panel. We've got these straps for those water cans and then we've got all these light lenses, which seem a bit... I don't know. And then we've got some mud flats on the back of the trailer which are missing from the kit and then this here is all seat belts. And I wanted to put the seat belts in because they're quite prominent in the windows. I could have made them myself but I thought I may as well just get this. So I've got this from Hannance. Waited an age for it. It seems that stuff from Europe is just taking it forever to get here at the moment. Um, I've got some tank tracks coming from the Chieftain. I've been in touch with the company today. Today is Tuesday the 15th of August 2023. I've been in touch with the company today 
and they've told me that they um that's a shame I'm gonna have to paint that black behind there before we glue that on I'll paint it black anyway um yeah they've told me that the uh the parcel was sent and indeed it was sent on the 1st of August and it arrived in the UK I think the 4th of August and it sat in customs until the 14th of August great so um that's that's what it was and as I was saying if you looked at my, if you watched my little review I did last night my little mid-month update I was saying on there the cost of shipping is becoming ridiculous especially with couriers and he was telling me he could have used the courier got it here in two or three days but it would have cost 50 euros so there you go so um that's ready to glue on that needs to be painted so we're going to stick that we'll grab a bit of blue tack again this is for newbies want to know how to do stuff we'll just grab a bit of blue tack make that into a sausage from missus and we can put that in there make sure we don't expose anything that's going to be seen and then we can stick that on there just like so so we've got our blue tack sausage there and I'm going to grab my airbrush and I'm going to turn the compressor on first because airbrushes work much better with a compressor you just blow out the dust from in there there we go so there we are so I've blown that dust out of there so we're going to give all this a prime in black so all the internal door frames I'm not worried about these ejector pin marks in here I might just remove that one because it might foul with the interior door card these are all okay because uh, they're going to cover the door card but I want to prime everything black so those doors are going to get primed we've got the steering wheel here ready to go that's all primed uh, this is ready for painting the proper colour I've got the pedal assembly built up here that's all looking lovely so that's all very nice and slender into scale and then here we've got the interior door cards the actual dash panel itself which is all cleaned up and ready to go and then we've got the actual cab itself with the, uh, the overhead piece in there already and I've got the ejector pin marks pretty much got rid of in there I'm not going to make too much fuss they're a nightmare to get in there and um, sand I guess I could scrape them but, um, I don't think you're going to see them right I just want to talk quickly before we move on the colour call outs in the instructions are an absolute joke um, the dash panel area they're telling you to paint black which is correct they're telling you to paint this down here olive drab and the actual dash panel itself mahogany it's only to paint all this back here khaki green and all of this is olive drab and then we've got the side panels here in khaki green and then we've got the roof in white and this panel up here in mahogany right here's the inside of an actual scammel commander that doesn't look much like mahogany to me that doesn't look much like olive drab and that doesn't look much like khaki green so I believe the whole interior of the steel cab, any exposed steel that you can see here on the edge of this door, I believe that is NATO green, the same colour as the external. We've got the seat besties there, which is like a metal box that the cushion goes on to. That's going to be NATO green. And then the this area down here is obviously black. This area here is that horrible, disgusting British Leyland brown plastic colour. It's horrible. I'm going to use XF60 for that because it kind of matched the seats. That's what I used on the seats. And then for the rubber matting on the floor and the door cards, I'm going to use XF59. And that's the colour I've used on the side of the seats here. So it kind of almost matches. So um, there we are. I'm going to have to do a little bit of detail painting, probably give it a bit of a wash and um, pick up the chrome on the door handles and everything. Proper disgusting British. If you're not, if you're not of a certain age and you haven't, didn't grow up in Great Britain, you don't know what I'm talking about, but my God, British Leyland knew how to make disgusting interiors. Jeez, they were vile. Um, horrible, horrible, shitty brown plastics and stuff. They were vile. They were disgusting. The exterior colours weren't much better, to be honest. Anyway, uh, I'll get on there some black painting done and then I'll come back and... Um, and I, I'm going to say, I think the roof would probably have been longer. I don't think it would have been left metal because it would have dripped condensation all over when they were sleeping. So I'm going to do that the same colour as the dashboard at uh, XF60. Okay, so just the doors and the matting. This, this, I think this panelling on here would have been XF60 as well because it looks like there's some panelling in the sides. We'll have a look at that, but we'll get it all primed first and go from there.
You'll be alright if by magic we've got it all painted. So we've got the uh, XF59 on the door cards and here and everything. And we've got the XF60 in the roof on the dash. Uh, so you can see now when that dash goes on there, that's how that's going to look. And we've also got the the bottom half of the dash is masked. So not the bottom half, but the bottom part of the dash is masked. So you can see there, we've got the black bit on the bottom. And we've also got those go away tape. We also have, if I can get my tweezers under there, also masked off those grills where the air vents are. And there's also another one here. Let's get a knife under that one. It's not actually moulded in the plastic, but I can see it in the photograph in the book. So I've actually just put a piece of masking tape there just to simulate a black circle. So there we go. So we got our dashboard there with the vents and everything. And I've also got the masking tape here over the radio. So that's just left that black so it's easy to pick up in detail later on. So there we go, so you can see how it's going to start looking with the dashboard. Looking a bit more busy now with the different colours. So um, so that's that, we get all that out of the way. Uh, painted the floor as well in the XF59, darker one, yes, XF59. And then we'll mask that off and do the green here, the bulkhead. Um, we'll get in here, we'll mask the roof. And then we'll paint the green around here. We'll mask here and here and paint the green in there. We'll mask there and paint the green on the edge of there, on the edge of those side panels, because this is green metalwork up there. So uh, there we go. So it's come time to fit this photo etch onto the instrument panel, or we'll fit the photo etch instrument panel. And straight away, I can see I've made a mistake. If you look at the instructions, they're leaving a white ridge across the top by the look of it. So I've left that ridge across the top. You can see it there. And actually it shouldn't be there because the photo etch panel goes right up. It doesn't just go up to that ridge, it goes all the way up to the top. So what we're going to do is just shave that away. Let's grab my other knife. And then we'll have to paint it again. But we'll have to paint it afterwards anyway because we'll have the, the shiny metallic edge on the etch anyway. So we'll just come along with a knife and just trim that away. Just like so. If I could avoid sanding, I will. There we are. I just I will have to give it a quick go in over just to check it's flat. There we are. And there we go. It's not perfectly flat, but it's good enough to, to glue this on. Um, what I don't want to do is have to paint it again before I um, fit this. So that's going to go on there like that. And we could, we've could still got the black behind that. It's the black behind this vent here that I'm worried about. So we'll get the photo etch cut out. For those of you that are pretty new to photo etch, if you need something hard, don't ever cut your photo etch on soft mat because what will happen... I don't know if you can see that, but um, what happens is it dents it. You can see there... Where I've pushed the knife, it puts a dent in it, so do it on the hard surface and it won't. So get as close as you can to the part and just cut through, just like so. I use a, a radius blade because uh, I, I find it easier to cut with and you can roll the blade to get the cut. So that's done like that. And then we've got some little nibs on here and I am going to literally use a sanding stick to remove them. I don't like using files and stuff because they tend to pick up. They're generally coarser than your sanding sticks. If I'm using a sanding stick, I can, I can get much better control, much better feel for it. So if you can, it's better to go along the length of the photo etch than it is to go across because you're more likely to bend it if you go across. There we go. So now we need to look at getting a curve on it. As you can see, it's got a natural curve in it anyway from the etching process, which may well be enough. No, it's not. What I don't want is it to be... I don't want the glue to be holding it down because it'll just spring off eventually at some point in time. So what I'm going to do is grab a sanding sponge. Okay. You've got all the tools to hand. 
then just gently roll very gently because this paint will just crack off easily it, it doesn't stick very well to the brass at all so a little tiny bit more I'm just literally letting the knife or the, this is like an exacto handle sort of thing let that just roll over it and there we go you can see now we've got the perfect curvature on there so the glue will be holding it down it won't be actually it won't be springing it into place so now comes the time we can glue it and we can first of all check the fit so we can see it goes absolutely dead flush with all edges it's perfectly sized for the part so there we are now that bit of plastic there is showing through so what I'm going to do is grab a sharpie colour that in black and I'm going to do the same over here just where those holes are just to make sure that we don't see any tan plastic showing through there we go you can see now we don't have the tan plastic showing through so get rid of the sharpie get my Pringles lid get some of the VMS black thin love using this stuff because it's the, in my opinion the best super glue on the planet and what I'm going to do is just dab some on here if you remember I previously roughed up the back of this panel okay so I'm going to place this on if you notice I'm just going to place it on I'm not going to push it down I'm just going to drop it on there Make sure it's correctly positioned. As you can see, the beauty of this super glue is it doesn't dry instantly. I've got time to move it and play with it and get it in the right place. Then give it a push down, and that should start to lock it in place. Now they say this glue needs 24 hours to dry. It dries literally in, in seconds, a few seconds, but fully cured apparently it's 24 hours but i absolutely love the stuff so you can see now that is actually glued on there now and in place so you can get off the the outer panel just like so go around here there's been a lot of talk about this photo etch set it's like sort of near yeah, shall I bother shan't I um, to be honest if I was building another one I probably wouldn't bother it's it's a bit lacking to be honest I don't know why they've included lights and everything um, when they don't really look very realistic at all uh, but they also haven't included the scammel badge on the front of the grill which is missing in the kit so it's strange There we are. And we're also going to rough the back of this up. So we're going to lay this down on a flat surface. I should have done this before I took the fret off. You see the glue will stick to the black surface on there because it has a texture. But it won't want to stick to the shiny surface on the back of there. Right, so we're just going to grab our sponge once again. Throw in the photo etch across the room. Get that down on there. I've got a white mess going on here, haven't I? We're a real cluttered bench today. You see, now that's far too much of a curve on there. So we'll just flatten it out a bit. And then we can place this over that one. See how it lines up. You can see we've got our reflective dials and everything. And then we've got the this, this varnish on there to give the, the, the dials a, a shiny finish. And as you can see, it's springing, so I don't want that. So I'm going to flatten it out a bit. It is very thin this one, so it's it's not too much of an issue if this has spring in it. But of course one of the advantages of having spring in it is we can come along with our extra thin super glue and just 
put some on the back. get it into position just like so so that's gone down so now we can do the same on the other end just pop some glue on the back of there pop some down that edge There we go. You can see when you hold it down, it, it takes a few seconds, but uh, it's not like the a lot of the um, thin super glues. They just they just dry as soon as the touch of them they're dry. And then what we're going to do? We are going to go around the edge with the black super glue and go around and fill in the joint between the plastic and the photo etch, and the joint between the photo etch and the photo etch. Some of this glue will capillary under, some of it will go over the front. If it does, just wipe it away with your finger and say it doesn't dry instantly, so you've got plenty of time. We can just go around and run some in there. I'm actually going to get some more glue because I want a bigger ball on my applicator. So we can get some on there and just run it over. Just like so. And then what we can do is come back when that's dry and we can sand that out and it will just look like one solid piece rather than a piece of plastic with two little bits of brass stuck to it. And that's the kind of effect we're after. There we go. Job done. So that's all that taken care of. So we can let that dry and then just, once it's dry, we can sand it out. I would not put um, any uh, accelerator or anything on the photo etch part that has the paint on it. It may well attack the paint and make it come off. So be you have been warned. Sometimes paints were affected by the um, accelerators, so yeah, right. So we'll leave that to dry. The piece of plastic out of the way, put that over there to dry, and then we can get on with something else. Okay, so I've sanded out that blue tack as you can see, and um, we've now got the tan plastic showing. So now we need to paint this black again. This is the black is the actual finished colour for that. So I've got a piece of blue tack, squashed it flat. I'm just going to lay this on there very gently push it on. I don't want it to sink in at all because we, we want to get the edges but I'm just trying to protect the front face then we can hold that like that paint it we will get any paint on the front face keep the paint light and it won't capillary under and we'll be good to go I'd rather use blue tack than tape because I'm never confident this Edward pre-coloured photo etch it's usually very nicely done this set I've got here is slightly off register which is a shame but um Generally, the paint doesn't stick that well to the surface, so be a little bit careful. So, um, we'll get that done in a minute. I'm also going to get some masking done and get some green paint down uh, on the interior of the cab, and then we should be able to start pressing forward with getting some assembly done. So, let's see where we go from here. Okay, so we've got our green painting done, so we can get it all unmasked. So, there's the roof. As you can see, we've gone inside and done all the pillars, all around the windows and everything. So, that's that. So, we can big holes in that. I thought I was going to push it away but it's not going to work. Oh dear. I have to come in and brush paint that frame around there or maybe mask it and spray it. I could have perhaps cut this tape but uh, obviously that hatch in the roof there will be a green frame around that. So let me come in and map, cut a circle and mask it and spray it. We'll see. Um, because there's going to be numerous occasions we'll have the green paint out so there we go so I can get that masking tape out of there just while I'm on her I want to give a shout out I was watching uh, 
one of his premieres last night. James Mower to Boldly Goes Model Works. If I think of it, I'll put a link down below. If I forget, please remind me and I'll add it. Go and give him a subscribe. He's got a great little channel. He's just at the 400 subs. He deserves more than that. And um, he does premieres and he joins in on a couple of lives and stuff. And uh, does some interesting little builds, good little reviews and stuff. Go take a look. And um, as I say, give him a subscribe. He's not been very well lately with his health and stuff. So uh, he's not had the best couple of years, to be honest, or at least 18 months. With uh, all sorts of different goings on. But, um, lovely chap. Go and give him a sub. So there we go. So that's that. We can see now we've got the, the roof colour there. We've got the, with the, the body colour in the middle and we've got the panelling around the bottom. So when that goes in there, as you can see, it's all looking pretty dandy. It's going to be a lovely looking interior. I mean, it's like I say, these British Leyland colours are quite disgusting. But having said that, for the modeller and for the, you know for this truck cab, isn't it better than just looking at a black, you know, different tones of black, <laughs> different glosses, you know, semi-gloss, gloss and matte black or greys. It's, it's, um, it's quite nice, isn't it, to see all these bright colours. When we get the seats in there as well, it'll all be worthwhile. So there we go, we've got our rear bulkhead there. So that's going to sit on top of there like that. You can see now that it's starting to take shape when that's in there. That's going to sit in there like that. So we're not going to have any doors open or anything because I'm not doing a dio. Um, because I don't want to and can't. Well, I say can't. I've never really tried paint figures. I mu it's something I must have a go at. There we go, that's all unmasked. There's a dog barking ten to the dozen. <laughs> it's gonna get Jess going, I expect. Here we go. She's come out. And there we go. That's that. As you can see that panel there. And what I've done is you can see that I've actually made the masking tape over the edge of the panel if you look okay so that's that's going to sit in there like that so you can see how that's going to go how that's going to look in there if the camera will focus on it focus in there please there you go so there we are so um i wanted to cancel the tracking how do i cancel the tracking Cancel tracking, right? So, uh, so there we go. So, um, right, let's push on. I need to do some more work on this instrument panel. You can see around this top edge, there's some imperfections where that super glue was. So, I need to reapply some glue and get that done again. We've also painted all the inside of the doors and around all the window frames and everything. And um, we've got our seat boxes here, they're all done. And there's that box that goes in the back in there. So, yeah, we're getting there now. So we'll get some more work done, we'll see you in a minute. So pushing forward, um, waiting for paint to dry and stuff. So I'm looking in here, we've got all the cabs to assemble. I've got to work out a technique to assemble this because as you can see in the instructions, what they're telling you to do is put all the lining in the cab there, which is all well and good. We have to fit our seat belts at some point. Um, but then they're telling us to put these seats in here, but add these vertical frames to the base. I don't really know how we're, I'd rather put this, I'd rather have it all on here and then put it all in as one unit. So I'm going to see if that's possible to do. We shall see. Um, so moving forward, I've just looked at this. I thought we've got the bonnet, we've got these hinges and they're going to need some filling because we've got the, we've got a separate, we've got an outer there and an inner. And when the inner goes in, trust me to pick up the wrong one. When the inner goes in, we have a great big ejector pin mark in the middle of it. Yay! Just what we want. Ejector pin marks are what it's all about, isn't it? It's great. Makes uh, makes interesting times. So um, I've also got to remove some of that plastic from in there because it's making it not fit very well. Let's have a look. No doubt when there's some extra thin, it will go in and just sit down because it sits down like that. 
think what we'll do is chuck some extra thin in there. Get rid of those instructions because it's probably weighting the camera out. So I think we'll get some extra thin in there. And then we'll get a peg on there. It doesn't really matter if it damages the plastic surrounding because it's all going to be filled and sanded anyway. So you can see that's gone in like that now. And that should stay in like that. And then we're going to fill everything with super glue so it's all going to get firmly glued in anyway. And that one's the same kind of. You can see we have these, where's my radius blade? Here it is. We have these kind of little vertical lines in the side. It's a bit strange. Put that one in there and that's gone in fine. So we can get some extra thin into there, let that capillary around, and we will get a peg on there. There we go, job done. So that's that. Then we've got this frame going inside the bonnet, and I've noticed here we've got an issue. If you look, it goes down and the back fits pretty nice, but the front seems to be. Have I done that right? Yes. So we have the if it's clamped in you can see the back fits in quite nicely but the front is slightly raised and I've got a feeling what's going on here is you've got these numbers on here you've got L1 135th commander and you've got the part number so what we need to do is come in with a knife it doesn't need to be tidy because this is not part of the display. I don't know why they've got all this stiffener in here, to be honest. I think at one point they probably intended to give us an engine, but then decided not to. Knowing Obby Boss, they probably made a bloody Ford V8 or something and realised it's not as a scammer. <laughs> if their A20, A26 Invader is anything to go by, they probably completely and utterly cocked up with the engine. There we are, just scrape that away. It doesn't need to be neat and tidy and perfect or anything. There we go. Get rid of that. We should find now that that will fit in. Yes, as you can see, when it's clamped down, it all pulls up nice and tight. So what we'll do, I think, is make sure we've got no sprue nibs or anything on it because it feels like, it feels like it's kind of tight. Maybe there's a raised edge on that ejector pin there. There certainly is on that one there, so we'll get rid of that. Got no sprue nibs on that face, nothing affecting it. So we can clamp this into position now. That needs to be clamped like that. Uh, I'm going to cut the pegs, clamp that in. It looks like we're going to have to do some sanding, guys, because this back edge does not want to go in properly. It doesn't seem to. doesn't seem to have the correct form. I want to check it on the body. I want to see which ones, if it fits well in its natural state. It does need to come in. I think what we'll do is glue it and then we'll see what it's like. And if it's no good, we'll have to break the joint. It's weird, it's like there's something holding it off. Ah, if you look here, you can see that that one there is sitting higher than the others. I'm going to sand them down. They're all slightly higher than the cross member, which is probably not supposed to be the way it's made. I don't understand why they've got all this detail in here anyway. 
um, I'm reluctant to remove them because maybe when the bonnet goes on there is a gap. Yes, the bonnet sits up higher so you can see down in there, so that's what they're there for. But, um, it just doesn't, you can see it's, when I push it, it's just springing it back out. What it needs is a good strong clamp in there, like that. And then one on the side as well, like that. Try and repeat that here and then get one on the side. It's still not fitting very well at all. And then here we want to get one clamped in there. Kind of get on an angle if I can. And then we'll do the same here. It's not going together well at all, is it? If I could clap it like that. Hmm. Let me get this sorted, then I'll come back and show you what I've done because you're going to fall asleep now. Okay, so what I've decided to do is just glue the middle here just to pull it down. I'm going to use some of the quick setting, I think. So just get plenty of glue in there just to hold this down. We're basically gluing it to the top here, we're not gluing it to the sides. And I'll do the same here on the on the front. Let that capillary around. The front is actually fitting a lot nicer than the back. Um, There we go, so we'll let that dry for 10 minutes and then we'll come along and play with the sides. But, um, at the moment I, don't, I really don't want to just glue it all together because I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Yeah, you see that hasn't closed up at all there. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. All right, now these have dried. We'll get some of our VMS Black Thin Super Glue. And we'll just run that into there, put plenty on there so it's got plenty of reserve to go into the gap. And we can sand that out and it'll just look like one piece of plastic then. You'll never know it was there. If you've noticed guys, I've stopped using Mr. Surface Surfer Gap Filling because it shrinks back. And when you put a primer on it, it will sometimes I'll take it in a bit as well because the thinner is in the primer will dissolve it. So I've started using this VMS Black Thin Super Glue, which I find is a superb filler. It sands out and polishes just like plastic. It's not too hard. Like some super glues, when you try to sand them, they're like glass, aren't they? And this stuff sands just like just like hard plastic. Like Hong Kong models or Hasegawa plastic, that's how this is. Right. So we'll let that dry and then we can sand that back. In fact, I'm going to give that a quick little kick. Just a quick one. I'll dry quicker and then we can get on with the sanding bit. So I'll see you in a minute when I've sanded them. Um, what else have we got to do? We've got to wait for this paint to dry on the interior. Uh, we're half an hour into the video. We could look at um, assembling this grill and everything I guess. And then once the cab's all put together, there's a lot of work goes into this cab. We've got lots of brackets and bits and pieces to go on. Once that's all done we're ready to um, stick the cab on and then we're going to finish off the trailer and that'll be it. Job done. So uh, Cab's looking good. Oh, I, I forgot to put this piece in here in. There's a piece in there, I think it was E6. And in the inside the roof down the side there. So uh, that's glued in. And luckily the plastic is close enough, I think I don't need to. I might just go in there with a brush and just paint that in. But um, yeah, I will do because it does look obvious, doesn't it? I guess. So uh, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so they're all sanded now and everything. They're ready to go on as soon as the bonnet's all sorted itself out. But I'm going to leave that for a good. I don't know, probably 12 hours to let it really sort itself out. So I've got the grill off the um, 
off the fret and I'd forgotten to actually sand it so I decided to sand it while it was here and I caught one edge and managed to fold it over so when you're sanding these things always just don't don't do this just go like this just pull your sander stick across okay um, what I did I actually went back up I caught that corner and when I went down it, it folded it right over I've managed to roll most of it out what I did was put it on a hard board and then just rolled it like so to get it out and it's um, it's probably not going to show once it's got a coat of paint in it but you can see the bend is is just there I'm sure they got dented and beat about anyway now you've got these little legs on the bottom <clears throat> I've noticed on here it doesn't show those legs sticking down and it's definitely the bottom because you can see on here we have a you can see there is a rivet there and there's not one there and you can see there's a rivet there and there's not one there so that's definitely the top so the bottom has those legs on it they don't show if you try and offer the the the, the grill up to the um, support with the legs still bent down it's too tall so they have to come off but then when you try and fit it in they've got these legs too far out so you can't physically you just sand that nib off of there so you can't physically remove uh, you can't physically fit this in unless you remove those legs so we're going to get some old Tamiya cutters I'm just going to cut those bits of brass off nice and flush just like that and then we can come along and just sand any, remain, any remains that are there okay so that's ready to go in and what we'll do now we'll get this glued in and then we'll etch primer it but I've noticed something else there's some big sink marks in here and this grill actually goes this way around so that is going to be very visible once you fitted the grill you can see the grill is going to sit there and you can see right in front of where the grill is you've got some great big sink marks I don't know why it's so dark in here because I haven't got the big light on sorry guys there we go it's better isn't it um so there we are I can't believe that that is how I used to work that is how all my videos used to be like that and now they're like that <laughs> since I got my big lighting so uh, there we go so I'm gonna have to fill them in so I'm gonna use once again I'm gonna use my VMS super glue to fill these in because it will dry rock hard it won't shrink back and it won't sink when I put primer on it I'll have to get some more out so we'll get some more of this is the one here VMX flexi 5k CA black thin available from premium hobbies these people here um, you can get that from premium hobbies don't forget to use the code NMB10 and you will get 10% off um, and also if you can't get it from there scale model shop sells it they don't have a discount code but uh, scale model shop is a very good shop indeed right so there we go so that's those sink marks all filled in so we'll let that dry let that sit like that let that dry and then um, sand it back and then we'll come back and we'll get this grill fitted unfortunately it's all a bit bent about where I caught it when I was sanding it dullard make sure when you do yours you do it in the fret and then it's you haven't got the risk of making the same mistake as me then so there we go right I'll see you in a minute okay so as I was saying to give your photo etch a clean a bit of a clean and also give it a key for paint you can see this side of these belts is etched anyway you can see there's an etch on there but like with these mud flaps to give them a key and to give them a clean if you do that if you just stroke them with the sanding stick this is a worn out 400 so it's more like a 600 or even 800 just stroke the parts in one direction and make sure you don't do what I do and come up and lift it like that just stroke the parts and come back up down up like a robot okay and then we can turn it over to the other side and that way your etch primer will take a lot better at the moment I'm playing with some different etch primers so we'll see how we get on there we go 
we are ready. Oh, look at that. I've just done exactly what I said not to do. That just shows you how lackadaisical you can get. Luckily, I didn't bend the mud flap because that needs to hang nice and flat. The rest of it doesn't matter because it's seat belts. But uh, that just shows you if you're clumsy, this is because I'm talking on the camera, not thinking about what I'm doing. What I've done is come back and just literally as I've gone forward, I've caught the edge of it. You can rewind, press the back arrow button, go back 10 seconds, press it twice, you go back 10 seconds, you can see it again. See just how stupid I am. Right, so that's that done. Um, so we can start, I guess, looking at making up these seat belts. Okay, so I was going to anneal these seat belts, and then it suddenly dawned on me, like, we, we do that for aircraft, but with these, they're inertia reels, so they would be fairly tight-ish when they're wound back in. They'll have a little bit of a, a flop in them, so we will give them a little bit of a flop, so they don't look like pieces of brass. You can see that one there has got a bit of a bend going on, but that's where it's distorted when I'm sanding. The way, the way I sand these, when I have to remove sprue nibs from very flimsy parts, I hold the tweezers right next to where I'm going to sand and then just sand the nib away in that localised area and that way it gives you the least amount of distortion. You're still going to get some but um, it's very good to have a brand new blade with photo and try and cut as close as you can to the part. So you can see here what they're telling us to do is fold these up, fold them backwards and forwards and everything on themselves. So we'll do that and then we'll get them. If I might even assemble them as a complete seat belt and then just stick it in as a unit. Um, and then we can assemble them and paint them. Um, so what they're telling us to do here is to take this one and with it this way round, we're going to fold it like that. So we will get some, some of our super glue in there and we'll get some in there. And we just, in fact, what we'll do is at the same time, we'll do the other side as well, and we'll get some in there, and then just close it up like that. There we go. So that's given us our sort of thick body at the base of the seat belt, and then with a cotton bud, just wipe away like so. remove the excess and that should stay together there we go and the same on this one we're going to bend one around the front one around the back and here I'm going to position them first before I glue them because they have a tiny little point and they so as they bend around they don't stay they don't stay like this they, sort of, they go all over the place so what we'll do is just pull that around pull that one around Get them in about the right position. Make sure the slot is clear for the other belt to go through, just like so. There we go. You can see now there, it's kind of straight. It's going to get a thick coat of paint anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, you can see there now that's kind of good. And then we can get some glue and just drip it on the top and that will capillary in. Make sure we've got both sides. There we go. That will capillary in and then we can just gently dab it with a bud and remove the excess glue. You can see how flimsy they are. They're still moving about. I think I'm going to give it a bit of a squeeze. This glue, this VMS stuff, it's brilliant. It doesn't really seem to work until you just push it so you can slide it around and then, and then push it into place. So there we are. And then we'll do the same on the other one. Bend that one over that way, bend that one over that way. As we use my fingers because I can. And that one broke off, so we're not going to worry about that. Generally happens with this Edward stuff where it's got this tiny little, tiny little connection. I guess what we could do is just pick that up with the super glue, put a drop of super glue on there, and then place it on 
and make a right old mess like we've just done there. Roll the cotton bud over it and let's see what we're doing. Just slide that up. Yeah, see I've pushed it down so it's stuck. But because it's this wonderful VMS stuff, it's not stuck like normal super glue. See, I could still pull it off. That side is in the correct position. So we'll just get our tweezers into there to make sure that slot's open for the next belt to go in. And then once again, super glue on the top. Let that capillary in. And there we go. So we can let that dry and then we can just brush it off with a fiberglass pencil. As I say, neatness doesn't really matter on these because they're going to get a thick coat of paint because I want it to, to um, look like a piece of plastic like it really is in real life. So get that one to go around there. That one can come over there. That one can go back there. You can see how that goes like so. And then drop a glue in there, drop a glue in there, and a drop of glue in there. And then just dunk, pull it all together like that. And then we can just wipe it off, wipe off any excess, just like so. As we can see, that's all gone together nicely. So there we are. That's that done. Uh, that one's moved out a square a bit. But I'm not worried about it too much because it's going to be sat right down next to the seat anyway. You're not going to see it. Now in this photo etch set, they give you photo etch centerpieces to replace the buckles in the kit. But the buckles in the kit are really nice, so I'm not going to bother replacing them. Um, I don't see the point in replacing nice plastic with photo etch because I mean photo etch for the belts yeah but not for lumps not for blocks of plastic and stuff I mean we've got a block of plastic representing a block of plastic where we replace it with photo etch seems crazy so we'll let those dry off then we'll get the um we'll get our fiberglass pencil which I think I got to hand here is this the fiberglass one or is this the wire brush come here come the bloody hell here you swine Yes, it's the fiberglass one. So we can just come along with this and just rub the rub the excess super glue off just like so. And it's the fiberglass pencil is also very good for roughing it up for, for a key for your paint. But um I find the glass fibers come out and it's not it can't be good for you for your skin getting these little glass fibers in there. So there we are. So um that's that done. And there we go. There's our seat belts. Made up. Ready to go. And what's going to happen basically now is we're going to fold. I guess it's telling us to fold the bottom over. Well, the bottom, that's the bottom there. That's the top, it's upside down. We're going to glue that into the doorway. And then this piece here is just going to go over the top. So I guess really we want to actually have it all in position really, don't we? Um, so I want this facing inwards. So that is going to have to bend over. So that is going to bend over that way. Because we want to see that stitching pattern on there on the inside. If we are going to see it, if you've got the door open, do it the other way because then you'll see it through the open doorway. But I won't be having opening doors, so there we go. So that's that done. And then this one here, we can do the same. Bend that one back, just like so. And that's going to sit in. That is just going to sit in the cab on that step like that and the top of the belt if you can see that in there the top of the belt is going to go into the top of that belt and that belt is going to sit in the cab like that 
can see in there. It's just going to sit in there like that and this other belt's going to go through the top of it. So as I said, you can see sort of a bit of the belt through that window, a bit of a belt through the driver's window. And uh, that's why I wanted to get them. That's the reason I bought the set. If it hadn't been for those belts, I probably wouldn't have bothered. So there we go. Right. Um, should we call it a day there? Are we ready to sand this down yet? Nope. Um, I'm going to call it a day, I think, for this video because I've had enough. I need to get my seeking done and um, I need to get this, I need to get everything done. And the tracks are imminent. They are in the country. They're like 30 miles from my house, if the tracking is correct, for the uh, chieftain. So we can also get that one done as well. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. In the meantime, I will probably get this grill glued on. because you will, You've all seen me glue photo etch on before. I'll sand that out, get this glued on. And then I'm going to get some etch primer on all of this and uh, go from there. In fact, I'll etch prime all this on the fret. So um, there we go. Right. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. This has been part 12, hasn't it, I think? So I'll see you soon-ish for part 13. And we'll get all this cab interior finished. And then it's lots and lots of reblies and bits and pieces to go on here. And then we'll get the windows fitted and we're away. I shall see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.